that was the new Destiny Lab. I want to give a shout out to those guys and tell them that I appreciate much for sending me the new uh, double album. And I do encourage people to go out there and check out their music. And um, for those that don't know, they're the ones that wrote and produced and uh, allowed me to use Ezekiel's Wheel, uh, the theme song for a Fallen Angel TV, our radio show. And uh, we appreciate them for allowing us to use and, you know, uh, promote and share their music with the listening audience. And I will be playing several tracks over the course of the next few weeks um, from, you know, the the compilation. It's a massive compilation of uh, a whole new collection of incredible, incredible music. And I do, um, you know, I do give a full thumbs up for their work and, you know, you can find it on uh, Destiny Lab on Facebook or MySpace, and there there should be links, and those guys can hook you up. But I just, it's uh, definitely awesome music. But I want to thank everybody for joining us. You know, this is uh, Fallen Angels TV, and I'm Ben Garcia, your host. Uh, Saturday, December 11th, 2010, and uh, we've got a very interesting show lined up today. And I'm going to be uh, basically reading. Um, from several different passages, from different different books from the Colburn Bible. Um, and most people have never heard about or read uh, any any of these particular wisdom teachings. And it's a pretty interesting book in the history behind it, um, whether you believe it or not. I, I, I'm not sure, but the story behind it is that it was carried to um, – England by Joseph of Arimathea after the uh, crucifixion of Christ and his resurrection and um, and that it was held there in the Glastonbury Abbey. Um, a particular priesthood was appointed to to keep over and watch over it for, you know, as long as they did. And Longshanks had got wind of it and burned down the abbey and um, in search of it, and there was actually a movie made about that. I don't know the name of the movie, but there was a movie made about that. But the, some of the priests were able to smuggle this document out, and some of the families held it, and they were able to keep it until modern times. And it wasn't but maybe less than 10 years, I'd say, that. This document was released, um, and it was produced uh, by Marshall Masters, and we've had him on the show and talked about the Colburn Bible and uh, the different stories, and it's a pretty interesting book. I've spent the summer reading over it, 519 pages, and there's several correlations with, um, you know, the Old Testament and the New Testament, the story of the of the you know, the Hebrew people and uh, and the nation of Israel. But the what makes this account interesting is that it's written according to the Celtic Druidic priesthood and also um, the Egyptian priesthood. So, you know, you have to be, you have to be, you have to know that they worship pagan gods and that that's the perspective that, is being written from, but the stories do parallel, especially the the most ancient stories. They do parallel um, what is written in the Word, and and what is interesting also about the Colvin Bible is that it's one of the only books I've ever found that has a a vivid description of what to, what took place in the first destruction. The Destruction of the First World Age. And, but we're going to go into that. But I want to give uh, my co hosts, Alan Swanson and Kevin Untenberger, a chance to give a shout out. Kevin, you want to sound off? Sure. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Uh, once again, I'm, I'm blessed to be here with uh, Brother Alan and Brother Zen um, for another exciting show. And um, uh, I was looking forward to, um, uh, to hearing. Um, your thoughts on the Colburn Bible, while I have never um, um, had the opportunity to read it, um, uh, 
uh, I trust uh, your discernment, Zen, and Brother Allen's. And uh, while um, uh, the, the, the portion of the show that really uh, tweaked my interest was the uh, uh, the thoughts upon uh, Nubiru or Rahab or, um, as some might call it, Planet X or uh, uh, Wormwood uh, that they correlate it to in the scriptures and um, while my views differ from, from, I think, I suspect from yours and um, Brother Allen's as far as um, the um, reality of this particular planet, uh, I and Jess, uh, before we came on to the show, said, well, I'm probably going to be the one that plays devil's advocate. What I should have said is I probably am going to be the one that plays God God's advocate uh, as far as the uh, concerning the uh, existence of um, this planet, the uh, X, this Nibiru, this Rahab, uh, this Wormwood that is spoken of in the scriptures uh the scriptures speak of it as wormwood and um i will uh, i will make uh, my viewpoint um uh, known on the show so i might be in um opposition to maybe possibly what you folks uh, uh you and alan might believe or or have come um to glean knowledge upon but uh, that doesn't mean uh, and that's what this show is all about uh, i think folks is uh, uh different perspectives but um uh, as far as uh, uh, Planet Nibiru go, goes, uh, in, in, as we get into the show, I'll make my stance uh, um, known to all of you, and um, um, we'll let the listeners decide, um, you know, uh, where the truth leads them. Um, uh, it's all in the process of us seeking the truth, and uh, and I love doing it with you guys, and uh, uh, and I think that uh, it's going to be an interesting topic here. Um, yeah, yeah, but uh, just know that um, I'm not trying to debate whether there, you know, this planet is in existence or not. I'm just reading. Oh, I know that. What I know. the the Coleman Bible says. So. Oh, I know. I know. But anyways, probably. Alan, do you want to give a shout out? Yeah. Good afternoon, Fallen Angels TV, and weighing and sharpening the sought our pet, uh, prophetic revelations that are, in my opinion, soon to befall the earth. There's uh, nothing I'd rather be doing. Blessed to be here. Yeah, so um, I want to, you know, just in, for those that haven't had a chance to even look at this, um, this particular book, it's incredible amount of, of, um, of work put together and it covers the uh you know like genesis to revelation it covers from the beginning all the way to the end but um it, so i'm gonna um go into this let me hold on one second um I've got to reopen the book. It's going to take me just a second. Hey, Alan, have you read? Um, you read some of this, right? Why don't you comment a little bit while I'm open, while I open this document about what you think what, uh, you read? Okay. Well, then it pulled out about five chapters from this book. I would say it would be on paper, say maybe about. 15 pages maximum. Uh, this is a breakdown of the day of the Lord. You have a, a ridiculous um, tight, highly prophetically uh, crammed full uh, of parallels to what is known in the word as, as the day of the Lord, what occurs at the inception of the six seals. You've got wow, you've got things. Uh, I just broke down 30 points here quickly that I'll just uh, – Look right through that I pulled out from probably about 60 sentences. Um, it speaks of a great red dragon. This is Revelation 12, descending with a tail. Also, Revelation 12, thundering, lightning, a darkening of the sky, uh, cinders, fires, and stones falling. That's at the first trump. Um, oceans pouring out of land. That's also in the prophets. You got a burning of men by fire. This is a, a primary facet of the end times. It's, it's the form um, that the judgment comes in uh, to eradicate the sinners from the earth. 
unrepentant. Um, you've got a tearing open of the earth. You've, you've got a red dust forming in the atmosphere, a crashing of rocks to the earth, a few survivors, men hiding in mountains, uh, terror, earthquakes, the earth being moved from its very foundations. This is the pole shift in 1924. You've got a drastic alteration of landscape, uh, mighty winds, uh, as soars upon men. Uh, it speaks of its mouth actually being an abyss. You've got hail falling to the earth, uh, the destruction of, of the trees, uh, melting of mountains, also a very specific uh, terminology to the day of the Lord in, in, in the prophets. The bloodying of waters, um, a vile uh, contamination of the waters, destruction of all the grass, uh, great swarms of locusts. You've got a total blackness, a destruction of ships, um, and Another point, the earth spewing up the dead and uh, the embalmed uh, being revealed to all, a halting of uh, the grinds and, and a great moral degeneracy. I mean, I could have even kept going with that. And then I pulled that out of literally like about 40 or 50 sentences of a prophetic um, chapter in this book. So basically um, what I've read in this book is um, it's the day of the Lord. But it explains the physics or a possibility of the physics behind it as, as being this great planet passing. And it also parallels um, implicitly the Exodus judgment. What happened there? So I'm not saying it's divinely inspired, but it is extremely interesting. And, and the more that I look at uh, the incursion prophecies and the physics behind the, the, the judgments you know, of uh, the final days, it really seems to be the only viable answer. It seems to be sort of something that's, that's mentioned in the word a lot without specifically referring it to uh, it is a planet uh, aside from once in you know, Isaiah 13. Mm. Kev, I'm going to give you a, a moment to comment here because um, I'm still having problems with this particular document, and I apologize. <laughs> that's not a problem, Brother Z. You know, um, folks, when it comes to the question of this Planet X or this Nibiru, um, um, I think it's it's incumbent upon people to remember where where the word Nibiru came from. It comes from the, superior, uh, the Sumerian cuneiform stone tablets and writings that, you know, are probably 6,000 year, years old. And uh, the term Nibiru, uh, Nibiru means uh, Planet of the Crossing. And uh, as far as the Sumerian culture is concerned, it, I, I guess you could say it was the re first recorded civilization on Earth after a flood, uh, you know, then called Sumerian, um, which is in today's Iraq. But uh, when it comes to um, how uh, people are tying this, uh, this planet uh, as far as to Wormwood in the scriptures, um, I'm a little bit, I was very interested by it and, um, uh, and all the hype that's on the internet about it. But, uh, um, you know, in the revelation of uh, Christ given to John, we find, a, you know, that most intriguing prophecy often used uh, to suggest that some kind of heavenly body will crash into the earth and, and do great damage. Um, the prophecy describes a this has a great star in our, uh, named uh, Wormwood, and, and when we examine uh, this concept in light of biblical support, and I'll read uh, Revelation 8, uh, uh, verses 10 and 11 real quick. And, it, and a third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood, and many died of the waters because they were made bitter. So we see in that article, in that scripture, um, we primarily use scripture here uh, in strict adherence to biblical, you know, animation uh, uh, that the Bible should interpret itself. And um, I think. Our challenge is is in understanding John's vision and defining what these terms and images mean. If we were to ascribe purely to the literal, phys you know, literal, physical meaning of these, uh, then we accept that a huge star burning brightly will crash into our planet, but somehow the Earth will not be destroyed. It will mysteriously manage to fall on only the rivers and aquifers, fully one third of them. 
which are scattered widely, you know, across the globe. Uh, and no one will die uh, from what would be a cataclysmic uh, impact, but rather from the water which is poisoned and made bitter from the stars. So now when you consider the physical interpretation of these things, we are confronted with events which violate the laws of our creator God uh, has set in motion in, in the universe. Uh, if we, on the other hand, cling to the strictly literal interpolate interpretation, uh, but then justify our position by suggesting that God will violate his own laws to miraculously bring forth uh, this to fulfillment, uh, then aren't we uh, departing from the literal, you know, literal physical understanding anyway and taking that position, I, th I think? Um, it's clear uh, that it would violate the, the principle of um, biblical integrity and the consistency upon which uh, the soundness of the scripture is based. You how know, and, and I think, I how, think how does it violate the integrity? I think because this, it's an important and powerful message Christ has given to John, and when you search the scriptures, no, no, I'm and talking you, about the the planet. I'm a, because I'm a, because um, if if a, if a, a planet was to impact the Earth, um, Brother Z and Brother Allen, um, it would destroy our planet. We know that. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. You, you know what I mean? And God never never said that He was going to destroy our planet. And um, right, right. so I think it plays into and and um, you know you know here again it plays into that ninety ten part of ninety percent truth and ten percent lie that. We that we see Hollywood portraying that you know there's going to be uh, you know of this this rogue uh, planet or asteroid hitting and you see you hitting the Earth and you see movies made about this to really uh, uh, to scare us and to you know and I think that the Illuminati they are because they they worship a different god they they kind of believe this and that's why they build these great underground bases to hide in and the scriptures tell us about it and let me let me interject here for just a second yep. kevin um mm -hmm. as as far as the planet in Nibiru, i i don't i never um you know said that this planet was ever going to impact the earth oh, and i, I never yeah and also as far as this colvin bible which thank god i was able to retain the document um <laughs> and then we'll, we're going to go into it now. The Colburn Bible doesn't describe this called the Destroyer, and I'm not even saying that it's Nibiru. All I'm saying mm -hmm. is that something is described, and I'm not saying it's Wormwood either. Uh, but mm -hmm. something you know what, Jen, in the Colburn Bible, hold on, hold on. Something in mm -hmm. the Colburn Bible is described as the Destroyer, and the, it talks about it coming close. To the earth and crossing the sky, but it doesn't gotcha. say that it impacts it. But um, well, we're I'm going to go I'm ahead. Really... And, Kevin, we're going to go ahead and go into this because uh, we're almost uh, we got an hour remaining, and I need to okay. cover a lot of territory. So right. um, this is from the destruction and the recreation. Uh, this is the Colburn Bible. It is known, and the story comes down from ancient times, that there was not one creation but two, a creation and a recreation. It is a fact known to the wise that the earth was utterly destroyed once and then reborn on a second wheel of creation. At the time of the great destruction of earth, God caused a dragon from out of heaven to come and encompass her about. The dragon was frightful to behold. It lashed its tail. It breathed out fire and hot coals, and a great catastrophe was inflicted upon mankind. The body of the dragon was wreathed in a cold, bright light, and beneath on the belly was a ruddy, hued glow, while behind it trailed a flowing tail of smoke, and it spewed out cinders and hot stones, and its breath was foul and stenchful poisoning the nostrils of men. 